So Rob and I did this, um, took this trip. I'm just gonna try and get this out of the way there so I don't see it. So Rob and I took a trip um, uh, back in April of 2019. It was a 12 day tour and um, it was organized by a company out of Portugal. And we had happened to meet the owner of the company at a, a birding festival in San Diego. And um, so that gave us an opportunity to find out about what this would be. And we decided to go on this trip. And then we spoke with our friends, uh, Don and Ray from Bit Winnipeg, and uh, they joined us on the trip. Um, the Ill image that you see on the right side, this um, rooster is the national symbol of uh, Portugal. It's called the Barcelos rooster, and it has um, some meaning for faith, honesty, justice, and luck. So Anne, when Anne asked me if I would do this, she said, now, why Portugal? Like, what, what, why would somebody go to Portugal to bird? Well, there are a number of reasons here. First of all, it's, it's very small. Um, you could probably fit two or three Portugals inside of Alberta. It's, it's only 218 kilometers wide and about 561 kilometers long. Um, there's, there's quite a good diversity of habitat and birds. Um, with um, Lisbon is in southern Portugal and within half an hour of that um, there's a lovely estuary and nature reserves um, over to the southeast about an hour there's Alentejo area um, with a, a big um, nature park there and then 45 minutes to the south on the only real highway like sort of um, high speed highway um, you get to the Algarve. And that's a major flyway from Africa. And so there's migrating species uh, that um, go both in both directions at different times of the year. Um, there's all kinds of protected wetlands there. And then um, Portugal is a very old country and there are all kinds of cultural sites as well. So we flew into Lisbon. Um, you can get there. We, we flew to um, Toronto from Calgary, and then there's a direct Air Canada flight to Lisbon. Um, Lisbon is known as a city of seven hills. Um, the only area in Lisbon that's flat is down by the river. Everything else is on a hill and moves uh, um, angles down towards the river. Is somebody not muted? Okay. Um, these are, this is some of the, um, the, the architecture is very old. Um, this is right in the central area. Um, the, there's a river, the Tejo River uh, runs right along um, the north side of Lisbon. And there's Rob standing there. Um, this is where um, ships were launched. Um, this was a, a huge navigational area, all kinds of explorers uh, left from this port. Um, this is one of the uh, areas that we stopped in um, for lunch one day. They had all kinds of um, different uh, high-end restaurants would ha have their little kiosks, and we had a lovely lunch there one day. Um, port wine is um, very famous in Portugal. Um, we actually went to the city of Porto at the end of the trip, and you can see the um, price of some of these bottles of wine, like here's one that one on the left is over 1,390 um, 1, euros. That's quite expensive for a bottle of port. Uh, their national pastry is this cream custard tart. And we had those um, many times, um, really, really lovely. Um, one day we were walking along the river and we came to a crosswalk and, and we thought this was a great sign, pushing to reset the world. Um, down by the river, uh, all kinds of gulls. So black-headed gulls, and, and when we see black-headed gulls here, we're sort of thinking Franklins and Bonapartes, but they actually have a gull that's called a black-headed gull. Uh, there's yellow-legged gulls. Lesser black-backed, which we get occasionally here as variants. Um, sanderlings, which we see on occasion as well here. Um, Lisbon has all kinds of parks and um, 
we went, we, the very first day we got there, we walked to this park and I was so excited to see these black swans, just lovely looking birds. And then I found out that they were introduced species. Um, peacock introduced as well and uh, common wood pigeon, which isn't introduced, but it's quite um, an impressive looking bird. Little park with the pool, pond. Um, this, this garden in, Port or in Lisbon, um, the Gulbenkian garden, and we actually saw the only common fire crest that we saw on the entire uh, trip there, and Eurasian jay. So this is how our trip uh, went. We started in, as you can see, we started in Lisbon. Um, actually, let's just look at the whole peninsula first. So if you, if you want to try and think about where Portugal is, it's, it's part of the Iberian Peninsula. And Spain has the largest part, portion of that. Um, so it's just a small, narrow area. Um, and as you can see, Lisbon is in this, um, area here. And our trip, basically, um, we started off when we arrived, we, we had three nights in Lisbon at the beginning. And then the highlighted areas are where we stayed. Um, so we went across um, the Tejo River up to this El Cochete area. And then we went across over into Alentejo. And that goes through Evora and then down to Metela. And then we went down to uh, the coast, down to Tavira. And this area is called the Elgarve. And this is where a lot of people go. There are lovely beaches and um, it's a very popular destination for tourists. And then across the coast to Sagres and um, and then, but we were staying in Tavira here. So we did day trips out into different areas. And then we ended up going back up to Lisbon, spending our last two nights in Lisbon um, on the tour. And then we did a post tour trip. Uh, Rob and I um, took the train up to Porto and met some friends and went up um, the Jurro River. And I'll talk about that a bit later as well. So this first section when we were in El Cochetti, um, so Tejo is the name of the river in uh, Portuguese and Tagus is what it's called in English. So it's the same river though. Um, it's quite a long river. Um, it it uh, goes all the way up into Spain. Um, and they have a nature reserve there. Um, so we had, there were all kinds of waterfowl. So great cormorant, Eurasian spoonbills, um, delightful birds to see. Common green shank, um, you know, a small wader, shorebird. Um, the black wing stilt is very similar to our black neck stilt, um, behaves the same, um, similar body size, quite elegant bird. Um, different plovers. Um, the one on the left there is a common ringed plover. So these would be related to um, some of the small, the plovers that we have. and. Um, and you can see there on the, the right is the Kentish plover. It's handy that they were both there on the same time. Um, now this is, um, I didn't take very many video clips on the entire trip, but here's one here and there is some talking over it, but this is a flock of Dunlin coming in. <laughs> So I don't know about you, but I've never seen um, that many Dunlin before. I'm going to play that once more because I think it's really neat. Uh, and then we had, um, so there's a, there's a lot of water in this area on these reserves. So uh, Greater Flamingo. Um, cattle egret, um, some of you may have seen those in other parts of um, um, North America. Purple heron, um, this is a large heron. Um, it's, it's very distinct uh, when you see it fly, it looks quite dark, but the shape of the neck is different than the other herons that we see. Um, Squaco heron, 
is a small heron. Um, it's about the same size as a green heron, if you've ever seen one of those. One of the really interesting things about Squaco heron is that when they fly, uh, they look totally white. And so you can see when it's there on, on the reeds that it, it doesn't look white. It's got that, that rufous sea brown color. Um, crested lark, oh, what a gorgeous uh, wee bird, um, just uh, delightful. Um, and then we've got Eurasian skylark. It was always handy when they perch because then you could get a better shot. And Sardinian warbler, really pretty bird. Uh, European stone chat, that one had just caught um, some kind of an of a, a bird, of an insect of some kind. And one of my favorite birds on this entire trip was the Eurasian hoopoe. And um, you're going to see a few more shots of that. Uh, it's it's a, just a gorgeous bird. Um, we've actually had an opportunity to see one of those, uh, a relative of that. There's an African hoopoe that we've seen in Tanzania. Um, this one is it's got slightly different coloring, but it looks pretty similar. Uh, white stork. Um, this is the first stork that we'd seen on our trip, and we'll see a lot more as we get down further south into Portugal. Black winged kite. Um, so there, there's a black kite and a black winged kite, and this guy's a little smaller, uh, very fierce bird. Um, booted eagle is one of their larger eagles, and you can see that um, this one had flown off and it has prey. Um, that it caught from a field and we watched it swoop down, get the prey and then take off over this structure. Um, black kite. And um, pallet harrier, another oh, really lovely bird. Um, Eurasian kestrel. Um, these birds, there were, there were several kestrels that we saw. Um, they don't have the same markings as our um, kestrel, but the, the uh, flight pattern is quite similar. Um, if you can see in the center of this um, shot, this is a marsh harrier that was flying over this area. And down here on the edge of the, the water are um, the swamp hens. And these are all black wing stilts. So they're all lifting up as the harriers flying by looking for its next meal. So then we, um, we left uh, Alentejo area, or we left um, uh, the area north of Lisbon and, and um, drove in a, a van. It was a very comfortable van. There were six of us plus our, our guide and we had a, an extra seat and lots of space for luggage. Um, so we drove down to Evora and this is the capital of the Alentejo region. And this is where we got our first guide um, who was not our birding guide. We had three guides on the entire trip and that was all part of our, our, um, our fee. Um, so we, we picked up this, our first guide in Avora and um, did a walking tour. And this is a, a Judas tree. And the very interesting thing about it is that the flowers appear before the leaves. And um, the, the, the um, legend behind this is that Judas hung himself from this type of tree and the, the tree was so shamed um, because of Judas that the flowers blushed and they had turned from white to pink. And so this is, you see these trees throughout the area and they're really quite lovely in April. Um, the guide took us to Almendres Cromlech and this is a, a really interesting area. Um, these are megalithic um, enclosures, um, these big stones. Um, they were built some or laid down sometime in the, the sixth to the fourth um, millennium BC. And it was uh, Neolithic communities across Western Europe. And there's a whole area through Alentejo where these are. And um, it was, it, they're, they're quite large and it was um, really stunning. And there were a few birds around as well. Um, and then we went um, to the Roman temple of Evora. Um, so 
there's been a lot of history with uh, different cultures coming up into the southern part of Portugal. Um, Evora itself um, is quite an interesting spot. Uh, they had dancers in the city, plaza. Um, there's a big chapel, um, the Royal Church of St. Francis. And um, in, inside the church, there's this one area, this chapel, and it's called Chapel of the Bones. And it was um, constructed in the 16th century by Franciscan monks. And <clears throat> around the area of the church, there were these 43 different cemeteries. And so they wanted to make a statement that, you know, you needed to um, listen to what was going on in the church and um, be supplicant. And so they, they dug up these bones. And so they constructed from about 5,000 bodies, they constructed this chapel. So the entire um, chapel is, is bones. It's, it's quite, uh, it's a bit macabre. It's, it's quite amazing. Um, the other thing that we saw in Evora um, were shops where they sold cork. And cork is one of the natural trees in Portugal. Um, they are used for the production of cork. Um, Portugal is, um, I think they produce 52% of the world's cork and it's a totally renewable resource. So this is what the cork tree looks like. And when it gets to be 25 years, um, they have um, workers who come along and they use a special tool and they strip the bark off the tree. And then they put down the age, the year that that was done. So this would have been in 2016. And every nine years, they can harvest the tree again. So from the time the tree is 25 until its life ends, um, around 150 to 200 years, you can imagine the number of harvests that each tree would have. And it's very sustainable. They use the cork in construction of homes, um, clothing, furniture. Uh, it's, it's, the cork shops were just amazing. So in that area, we did, of course, some birding and uh, woodchat shrike uh, was the bird. Um, so we have shrikes here, but this is a different one. Uh, the red kite um, and a carrion crow was uh, following after it, probably to see um, if it could get any food. We didn't see black kites very often perched, but in this shot here, there's two of them on that, on that branch. Um, Short-toed snake e eagle. Um, this is a fairly compact bird, uh, fairly uh, narrow tail. Um, it's a good bird to see. Now this is, we, we were driving along and, and this is the, one of the reasons why it's a very good idea to get a guide when you go to a, a place like this. Um, you might think you can drive around and, and you know, just see things. But here we are driving along and, and our guide elder said, um, well, we're gonna stop here at this, I think it's an old quarry. And on the other side of the quarry, um, take a look and see if you can find this. And all the way on the other side of that quarry. So here, that's what we're looking at. Eurasian eagle owlets. It was actually really hard to find them. <laughs> and then it was even very difficult to take a shot. And then we also saw one of the adults and it was perched, oh, maybe 20 feet away. You can see on an, um, in a nest, with the overhang, very well protected. So going back here, like, I think that's amazing that, I, I mean, he knew where it was. He knew how to show us, it was great. Then we went on to uh, Mertola and this um, is a, a city that's, uh, it's not that large. It's only got about 7,000 people. It's right on the, what, Wyand, Wyand I, I actually practiced pronouncing this. It's uh, Guayana River. And this river is about 700 kilometers long. It starts up in the mountains and it divides Portugal and Spain. And so when you're in uh, Metela, you can look across in, from certain areas and you can actually see Spain. And it runs right down to the coast. 
Um, there's an ancient uh, a roadway with the bridge that goes over the river. Um, this is the hotel we stayed at, the Hotel Muzu. Um, it was on the edge of a river, um, fairly modern looking. However, when you went into the lobby and looked down, there was a plexiglass covering over the floor. And this is excavated ruins below that. And they're not, they have, they have very strict laws on historical structures and you're not allowed to just dig them up and get rid of them and build something new. Um, so this is how you can see what's right underneath the, the lobby of this hotel. Uh, right from our hotel, we had a number of birds. Uh, European goldfinch was one of them. Fairly com common bird, although we didn't see it all that often. Um, we did some a drive out um, sort of north and into uh, the, the big park that uh, Mertola is in, this um, Guayana Park. Um, and we saw this little bustard, and this is a male, um, just a stunning bird. And I have a, a small video clip. Once again, um, there's some talking over top of this, and right at the end of the clip, you'll actually hear this clicking sound, which is the sound that the bird is making. There, so just before the 200, there was a little click, clicking sound, that was the bird. You see how it put its um, neck down and, and made that little click? Um, and then, fortunately, we got to see the great bustard as well, not just the little bustard. Another bird that we got to see in this area was little owl. Um, little owl, you might, uh, like it's actually, um, it's called little owl, but it's actually larger than our northern sawwet owl. Um, so it's it's not super little, but anyway, we were fortunate to see them. Um, I think in three or four different locations on the trip, and every time we saw them, they were always very camouflaged. Um, common buzzard, um, booted eagle. Benelli's eagle, um, this isn't a really common bird, um, but we were fortunate to see them. Short-toed snake eagle. You can probably guess what they eat. Here's another hoopoe. Just love it with the, the colors and the lichen and everything there. And great spotted cuckoo, that was a, a really good find. Um, they're not that plentiful, so it was, it was wonderful to see that bird. Well, this is our second shrike of the, um, the trip, the Iberian gray shrike. Um, and they have a number of different swallows and martins. So here's a barn swallow. Blue rock thrush, uh, we actually saw the male and the female in the same area. And this was just below, um, if you recall that uh, bridge that, that was shown in the picture of uh, the big bridge going across the river, this was in a valley just before that. And in the same area up on the wall, we saw the, a kestrel. And it's very difficult to tell the difference between lesser or common kestrel. Um, and it's only the length of the, the um, wings that and I, I couldn't tell the difference on this one. Um, Western black-eared wheat here, um, we saw both male and female, that bird. And so when we're out in that area and you're looking across the landscape, this is this valley in this uh, Guayana National Park. Um, so you can see it's, it's very scrubby, it's hilly, um, quite dry. And these are two of the most colorful birds. We saw the European bee eater and the European roller. Um, the bee eater, we actually um, had 
three or four of them on a wire at the same time. And it, it was just, uh, it was very exciting to see them there. And collared Pratt and Cole, this is another favorite bird um, of mine. Um, they're a, a wading bird, so a type of shore bird. Uh, we saw three of them in this area where this, this one was. And then um, one of them flew up and like I like if you didn't know, I mean, this bird to me, when you see it fly, I mean, it's, I just thought that was um, it was stunning. Um, we also have more turns, um, the gold bill turn and sandwich turn. And cattle egret, um, that one has something, a lizard or something in its mouth. Um, and now we're getting into this area where we're seeing storks. Um, storks, this is the white stork and, and they have a lot of, of history. Um, they've, you know, people have thought for years they're connected to fertility, um, good luck. Um, uh, the white stork is about between three and three and three quarter feet tall. Um, back in 1995 in the Algarve area, there were only a thousand um, that were reported and 20 years later, there's over 14,000 of them. Uh, they're a protected species. Um, they used to mi migrate to sub-Saharan Africa, uh, but now they're staying in the area. They even have some that nest on cliffs around the water, um, but they nest on all kinds of structures. Um, they're quite voracious and the farmers aren't particularly keen on them because um, there's so many of them and they just, um, they ravage the fields. They go after, you know, anything that's moving practically. Um, one of the reasons that our guide told us they had become more frequent or populous was because there had been some shrimp brought over on a boat from, I guess, um, I think he said from Louisiana and um, they ended up becoming an invasive species in the area. And then the, the storks came and there's plenty of food for them in addition to the, the uh, um, food that they could get from the fields. Now there's a really interesting thing that happens though in these stork nests, there's a sort of symbiotic relationship here because you've got this nest and down here, there's these holes that have been made by um, Spanish sparrows. So they're nesting down here underneath the stork nest. Um, and these look a lot like our host sparrows. So then we, um, in, in uh, remember we were in Myrtilla for, Myrtilla for um, three nights and we ended up um, doing some tours there as well. Um, this particular, um, structure here is now a Christian church, but it had gone through several reiterations um, from a Roman temple um, back to a mosque and then a Christian church. And all of the, um, everything, there are all kinds of conversions within the church, but there's still bits that are left from the past. Oh, and by the way, this is the hotel we stayed in. So it's down the hill with the pool there. Um, from where we stayed. Um, there's all kinds of excavation going around um, as well. Uh, so we, can, we uh, did these driving trips, or we went from Myrtilla down to the Algarve, and um, there were all kinds of water areas along the way. Um, so we had common snipe. And just like we have here with our, our stilts and our avocets hang out together, um, you can see the black wings stilt here in the back uh, with these two pied avocets. And some of these um, water areas that we were in were in salt marshes. Um, common poach shard um, reminded me a little bit of our, our uh, redhead duck, um, red crested poach shard. And on this particular lake, um, there were grebe nests, and these are great crested grebes. And they, there were, we saw a total of eight great crested grebes at this lake, and they were displaying and, and doing courtship. You can see this one with the um, 
feathers all out in the displaying behavior. And then there were a pair that were nesting. So you can see there's the nest, floating nest, just like we see with a um, redneck grebes, for example. With eggs in the nest, and there's the grebe right on the nest. Western swamp hen. And you may not have noticed that there's a turtle there in front of the, hen, the swamp hen. And then uh, it was pretty exciting to see little grebes, um, a bird that I hadn't heard of before. Gray heron. Um, gray herons are just, um, they're not much smaller than our great blue heron. Um, and they, they, you could easily confuse them. Uh, greater flamingos. Common shell duck, uh, quite an attractive bird. Alpine swift, um, there are a variety of swallows and swifts. Um, this one was particularly, uh, we'd see several of them soaring overhead and you try and figure out which one it was. Um, now, there were a number of um, different flocks of birds that we saw migrating. One of them was the European wimbrel. And, um, these birds um, nest down along the coast in, in um, the western coast of Africa, and they migrate up across the water. And so you'd see flocks. So in April, they're migrating, and they would go right up to um, um, the tundra, uh, the, taiga the taiga area. Um, and uh, so it's a long journey, and they would stop over um, after they'd cross the water. They'd stop over, refuel, and then carry on. Glossy ibis, so a relative of our white-faced ibis, I would assume. And here's another shot of the little owl, of a little owl. Um, we were staying in Tavira um, on, in the Algarve, and this was right near our hotel. And so every day that we left the hotel and came back, we always looked for this little guy. Um, very camouflaged. I, like, it would be very, for me anyway, I know John Anderson could probably spot this bird, but it was, it was, it was a challenge. Um, Red-legged partridge. Um, now these aren't particularly good uh, photos, but they're record um, shots for me of woodlark and Thecla's lark. Um, now, another flock of birds we saw migrating, uh, these lesser black backed gulls. And then we made our way all the way over to the southwest um, point in continental Europe, and that's called Cabo um, de Sao Vicente. Um, big cliffs, um, you can look out in, in, um, you know, to the west, to the south. Um, it was extremely windy. Um, we saw gannets, uh, northern gannets flying by. Um, it was also cold because it was windy. Um, Yellow-legged gull flying by. Um, and then we left that um, just away from the point. We drove through this area and we came across these red-billed chuffs. Um, and they really do have red bills. Um, so remember, we're staying in Tavira, so we drove back um, along the Algarve to Tavira, and you can see the, the beautiful color of the water and um, a marina dock area. Um, this is one day. Um, the meals on our trip were just fantastic. This is, this is our guide here, um, Elder. And um, he, his name is spelt with an H, but you pronounce it Elder. And we were calling him Helder for quite a while before we finally figured it out. Um, but we, he knew all of the uh, restaurant owners. Um, he knew all the areas. Uh, and Portuguese, um, some of you may speak Portuguese or know it. Um, it's, it's different than Spanish. And we found it um, challenging. It was a good thing that we had Elder because he um, obviously was uh, right at home. He was, uh, he's in his 30s and um, born in uh, just north of Lisbon and um, has a young family, just a, a really good birder and uh, just a fine person. 
Um, so we had great food. Um, one of the dishes that we had most frequently was fish. Um, cod is a, a real um, common fish there. Um, they say that they have over a thousand ways to, to uh, cook cod and we had several of them, it was lovely. Um, then we, we did see in that area, we saw Iberian magpie and that's an endemic bird to Portugal and Spain and the great spotted woodpecker. Um, that wasn't an easy bird to find, but it was, it was, we were really glad that we saw it. Uh, common house martin, this was right um, on the hill, down on the ground uh, below the hill where we were staying. And uh, they act, you can see they're, they're collecting mud for their nests and they build nests very similar to our cliff swallows. Cattle egrets. And little egrets. And um, black belly plover and ruddy turnstone. So birds that we see here too. So at this point, we're, we're leaving um, the south and we're starting to go back up north. And this is a spot that we went to on three separate locations, um, Nosa Senora de Arcelius. And it's, um, it's a chapel on the hill and it has a great viewpoint. And this is a video clip that Rob took on his phone. And it, um, you'll see it's a panorama shot. And off to the right, you'll see there's a couple of hills and the raptors would fly over and they get the thermals from these hills. And that's where we would see the raptors go by. And we saw a number of different species there. But what we were really looking for, you'll see shortly. So there are the hills on the right now. And what we were looking for was Eurasian griffins. And we had looked for them the other two times that we were there and hadn't seen them. And that time there was a kettle of nine of them. So we were very, very excited and rewarded for having um, with elders um, persistence and going back again. So now we're driving back towards um, Lisbon and we have the Sardinian warbler and Western yellow wagtail. And one final stop um, before we got back to Lisbon um, and we saw black crown night herons. And um, I believe they're just like the ones we have here. I'm not 100% sure, but I think so. So we got back to Lisbon and here we had a guided tour. Um, so that, that day uh, we got up and you can see there's fog over the Tejo River. Um, and we, were, we, we got a, a ride up, to, remember Lisbon's built on these hills. So we got a ride up to the top of the hill, one of the hills, and then we started making our way down. So if you look down, you can see all of these, all of these structures are built on the hill and the tiled roofs. As we're walking down, there's stairways that go down, um, like passages, and there's all kinds of art and uh, as you're going along. Um, this was one, one apartment that we passed by that had window boxes or, or um, planters, and these are old jeans and, and they had planted plants in them. And the, the um, Little roadways, they're all quite narrow and they're all cobbled stone that has been hand laid. Uh, we went into this monastery on the tour. And this is where Vasco de Gama's tomb is. Um, and he had established a sea link um, from Portugal to India. And uh, one of the um, art areas that we looked at had this uh, great piece of art. 
street art is a very, very popular thing. Um, Lisbon is known for it. Um, this particular artist here, uh, Bordello II, makes all of his street art on these walls out of trash. He has, he has a number of uh, different um, pieces around the city. Um, this area here, um, just gonna, um, there's a funicular that goes up here and it's the area is called, um, it's the Gloria Funicular. And it's a whole street art gallery all the way along the walls. And then Ray and Dawn here, this is funicular, they're deciding to give it a little push because it had stopped. Uh, we also visited this bookstore. Um, it's the oldest bookstore in the world, 1732. Um, it was destroyed in an earthquake in, I think it was 1765, and they um, rebuilt it, relocated it just a little way from where it was. Um, this Belem Tower, um, it's, all, it's the Tower of St. Vincent, and it was built in the 16th century, um, and it was a gateway to Lisbon. So it was the, the point of embarkation and disembarkation for all of the Portuguese explorers. So um, it's really a landmark. Um, this other structure is, is a lot newer. It was built in 1940, and it marked the um, 500 years since um, Henry the Navigator's death. So Henry the Navigator was the one who did a lot of the, the work on the exploration. So then our tour ended, and we took a train. Uh, Rob and I went up to Porto to meet up with some friends there. Um, Porto is uh, on the Juro River. Um, it's famous for port wine. Um, they have, you know, for centuries have, have uh, made wine and they'd float the casks and the, and the boats down the um, Juro River. So as we're going up the Juro, um, we had rented a vehicle. Um, it had six gears and Heike, our friend, and Rob were the drivers. And Rob had never used six gears before. Um, he's used to five, but not six. So that was a little bit tricky. The roads are very um, steep and windy um, on the edge of these hills. These are all terraced um, hills. So the, here's the Juro River down here with all these vineyards planted all along the hills. You can see the windy road. So you'd be driving along and then like all these switchbacks. This is the, the town that we stayed in, uh, Regua. Driving along, we had to stop for the, uh, the local goats going by. Um, one of the lunches, many lunches that we had This is um, a look at the Juro River. And this is um, a river boat. Uh, people take river cruises and they go up the Juro. So we, we actually went on a river boat, but it was just, a, oh, I think it was a, an hour and a half long. We went up the river and then back down. But the great thing about that was that we saw a booted eagle and Montague's Harrier um, from the boat, as well as a black kite and a red kite. Um, back at our hotel, we had uh, black red start and European greenfinch. and a, another Eurasian hoople. And this was right on the Wired by our hotel. This was, um, they give you a glass of wine when you get on the, on the boat. It was lovely. Um, we did get a chance to go to a few uh, wineries and places where they make port. So this was, we went to Sandeman 
And this is the view from uh, that, from their structure. So in summary, um, we saw 166 species on our eBird checklists. Um, our guide uh, kept track of the birds. And um, so it was, it was really handy. He shared the checklist at the end of the trip. And in just uh, the group that we went with, um, Birds and Nature Tours Portugal, um, they do tours not just in Portugal, but they do them in um, uh, Spain as well. Um, Jao is the owner of the company and our guide was Elder. And those are the, the websites um, and email address if you ever wanted to contact them. But I would say, um, I know that um, Ray and Dawn did a, another, another uh, follow-up trip and um, were qu quite happy as well with um, the guide that they had. I think that's it, Anne. Great. Well, thank you, um, Diane. I'm just uh, trying to, do you want to stop sharing your screen now? Okay. Um, and then we get everybody back. Yay. Okay. And I can turn my video on. Um, thank you very much. That's really interesting. I'm, I, um, yeah, now I'm kind of keen to go to Portugal. <laughs> um, very, very interesting. I love all those red, the buildings looking down. That was Lisbon? Yes. Where you were looking down at the, oh, that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, good. So let's see what questions we have here. There, there, there. Just fantastic, great job, fantastic, Diane, so beautiful. No, uh, is, is, if anybody has a question, please, um, getting lots of positives here, you can put on your chat, Diane, and see oh. um, your, all okay. the thank yous to you. Um, at, what, at what time of year did you say this was? Did you really um, it, was it was early April. So we, we actually left Calgary on the 30th of March. Um, so we were there basically for the first couple of weeks of April. So the tour was 12 days. So we were um, in uh, Portugal or in Lisbon for three days at the beginning. And then we had our 12 day tour, which ended up the last two days were in Lisbon again. Right. And then we spent five nights up in Porto. Okay. Before coming would, back. Would you say that that time of year, like, were you getting the migration from Africa north at that yeah. time of year? It starts in late March, early April. So the timing was excellent. Um, okay. The only negative thing was that it was chilly. And I don't know if it always is at that time of the year, um, but um, we weren't as warmly dressed as we might have been. I think, you know, jeans and a, a warmer jacket would have been, I mean, we had layers. But it was yeah. it was chilly until we got down into the um, the Algarve right down at the bottom. Um, uh, another really good time late August into September is really good because that's when the migration um, in the opposite direction go starts. Yeah. So both of those times would be great. So there's a question here from Andrew saying, did you encounter many other birders? Uh, oh. We had one um, group of um, people from England at the hotel that we stayed at in Tavira. Um, but I'm not sure how much birding they were doing. Um, so aside from that, I, I don't think we ran into any other birders. Well, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't crowded at all. Um, we did meet, um, the, the local people that we met uh, were either guides or um, people working in the hospitality industry and people that Elder would just speak with. Um, but we didn't, like there weren't a lot of other tourists. Um, and it just wasn't, it really wasn't that busy. It was on our return though, when we got back to Porto um, at the end of our, our, our trip there, it was Easter Sunday. And um, evidently the Spanish have found out about um, Porto. And so it was, we got back early in the morning because our, our friends had to catch a flight mm -hmm. or a train um, 
back quickly. And uh, so we got into uh, Porto quite early in the morning and it was wonderful. And then oh, it was just so crowded. All these people flooded in for Easter Sunday. And uh, we ended up spending a lovely day um, up on this hill with uh, musicians playing in a park and um, kiosks and food. And it, it was it was lovely. But that's the only real crowds we saw. Um, Lisbon is busy too. It's it's very busy. Mm. Uh, there's another question here from Lenora. Do, do they ever do pelagic trips, these the guides in Portugal? I have no idea. Um, it isn't anything that I've seen in their literature, but um, I don't know that. Hmm. Yeah, you'd wonder going out. Yeah. Yeah into the sort of Atlantic there, it might be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you did see gannets. Mm -hmm. Any other seabirds? Um, mostly gulls. Yeah, okay. So this was before COVID. There's, I just see another right. question here about COVID, but it just yeah. was. So that was, so if you recall, Anne, and Pat's here and Laurie and John are here. So yeah. this was in April and then um in it was what october november that we went to peru that was the same year and mark right. mark's here too yeah and then the, covid struck right and then covid started yeah. in um february march march i guess in 2020 yeah so we got, we got those in just in time we did indeed <laughs> okay well good well thank you thank you very much for that i think it's really interesting and certainly um, something to think about doing. Um, so uh, just a heads up for next month, we have uh, Jennifer Reimer from um, Parks Canada is going to talk about the Black Swifts that are, I believe, in Johnson Canyon. And she's done a lot of research about them. Um, and so that she's our speaker for um, December. And I, I apologize, I think you may have cut out, I, certainly on my computer, your voice cut out a few times, which probably was my internet connection. I don't know if everybody else got that as well, but um, I'm sorry about that, but that's what happens when you're in the boonies in Quebec. Um, but I'll be back next month. So good night, everybody, and thank you for attending. Um, it was great attendance and uh, We'll see you all next month. Thanks, Anne. Okay. Good night.